Is the PPT visible? Screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So today we will discuss about <clears throat> two powerful interfaces an LPC2148 microcontroller pro provides. To the external world. So what are those interfaces and how it will be useful for building an embedded system. We will just analyze that, how it will be useful. So we have studied that, how GPO pins are used to build an interfaces to the LCD, keyboard, and the LEDs and everything. So now we have got a fair idea about how we can interface many peripherals using the GPO pins. Now it's a time for us to move from GPO pins to other blocks of the microcontroller, which are also extensively used to build an embedded systems. Immediately after the GPO pins, the one which is very useful to build the products is what is called as A to D converters. In earlier days, earlier microcontrollers like 8051, this A to D converters were not available as a part of the microcontrollers because of the fabrication limitation and the size and the cost limitations, they were generally present outside the microcontrollers. That means that whenever you build a product, you have to purchase an ADC chip and interface an ADC chip to the microcontroller, and then you should be able to connect the sensors and other devices to the ADC or A to D converters. With the advancement in the fabrication technologies, so ADC blocks are started incorporated inside the microcontrollers. So LPC2148 is one such block where you can have the ADC is present inside the block. Now, so let us understand today how I can able to interface the sensors to the LPC2148 using an ADC block. <clears throat> Whenever we use sensors and use the ADC inside an Arduino board, we were using two functions called analog read, we use it. And whenever we want to send analog output, we using, we are simulating analog output using what is called as analog output. So analog read and output are the functions were built as a libraries and available to the programmer. Now what does we have to do as an engineer now here? So we have to develop such functions on, on ourselves so going into the details of the converters block, how it works, what are the registers present, what are the programming steps are required, how do you connect voltages, and all those things we have to handle ourselves itself. The advantage is that, so once you know that, how do you use an A to D converter blocks present inside the microcontrollers, you are in a position to handle such blocks inside any other microcontrollers. So we are going to develop library functions for the LPC2148 or reading analog inputs to the LPC2148. Now, whenever you want to use an ADC block or opposite of that, that is a digital to analog converter blocks. So what is an extra care we have to take into the microcontroller? As usual, microcontroller requires the crystal so that we are connecting, which is required for these blocks also to work because ADC and the uh, the different blocks or different registers present inside the ADT, ADC will require the frequency so that whatever the frequency generated from this AHB to VAP B bridge that is called as a peak clock. So peak clock is used as an input to the ADC block also. So since ADCs work at less than 4 megahertz, that is the time it takes, the speed at which it works to convert the analog voltage to digital voltage. So we have to reduce the 15 megahertz, the default frequency of peripheral clock into less than 4 megahertz. It is better if it's a less, 
So you there is a register is provided inside. Using that, we can divide the frequency and then we can able to supply the clock for this one. Next, whenever you use ADC and a DAC inside an embedded system, the power what is required to the microcontroller has to taken care. So the whole of this power, the, the whole of this for this chip, we give the power using the two lines. We know that the chip has provided one two lines called as VDD and a VSS. VDD means that is a 3.3 volts we connect to the power supply to the chip and the ground that is with reference to zero voltage. VSS is a zero voltage. Whenever the ADC block is present or a DAC block is present inside the chip, the challenge is there's a two another power supply lines will be provided. What is called VDD A, VDD unlock. So normal voltage supply to the microcontroller is what VDD. So if you are using ADC and DAC, there's one more power supply line called as VDD A. They provide it, and again VSS A they provide it. in the sense two separate pins are provided for supplying the power to the microcontroller for the blocks which is meant for analog. All other digital blocks will require the power supply from VDD and VSS. So it is generally recommended that when you use any ADC or DAC block. Isolate the power supply. Give a separate, uh, give it from a separate source the voltage to the digital blocks, voltage to the analog blocks. For so you reduce the noise in the circuit. For example, if you don't not, do not have the provision, then what you can do is the same VDD can be connected to VDDA. The VSS can be connected to VSSE. So always remember that whenever you use analog portion the microcontroller, all the microcontrollers provide separate two pins for. The power supply, both for the digital logics and for the analog logics, it is better to isolate and give the power supply separately. If not possible, you can short them and you can able to, able to provide this uh, same voltage to this one. So this is one concept we have to understand. Now we will directly go to the ADC block, understand how ADC chip is provided. <clears throat> how do you program that one? If you look at this diagram here, there are two ADC blocks are provided by LPC two one four eight. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So two ADC blocks are provided for the LPC two one four eight. They will be popularly called the ADC zero and ADC one. So each of these ADC provides multiple channels. You can look at that. There are many number of pins are there. That means that so AD zero. Whenever I say AD zero, now one words it means that ADC zero. That is first ADC. Whenever you use a word called AD one, now one words is called as ADC the first block. So ADC zero block and ADC one block. So whenever one ADC is provided. Each ADC do not just give one supply line like this. They will not provide only one. They'll provide what is called as many inputs. They provide it. So that means that each ADC can accommodate what multiple inputs. That is why ADCs have inside the fundamental block. What is present inside ADC is called as multiplexer. So you would have studied the multiplexer in the digital electronics. What is a multiplexer? Which accept the multiple input, select the one output, and give outside. Similarly, the ADC is present inside the microcontroller LPC two one four eight. Each of the ADC has got a multiplexer. So, what type of multiplexer? It is not a digital multiplexer. What you studied, it's analog multiplexers. So, each of them they have got analog multiplexer. Whenever analog multiplexers are there, that means that one ADC can able to take multiple inputs and select one among the many and use that for conversion. In the sense, what is an advantage of that? Instead of just connecting one sensor and providing outside a switching circuit, if you provide the multiplexer inside the ADC block. You can directly plug in many sensors directly to the LPC two one four eight. So, but you should always remember that I, even though each ADC provides multiple inputs, I can able to convert what only one input at a time. I should be able to select one, then I should be able to do the conversion. Then I should go for the what next switch. Since they work at four megahertz speed, I can switch in so fast that within a fraction of a time, you feel that you are measuring all the sensors. Now, if you look at the ADC first ADC zero. It has provided what is called six. You can count it: one, two, three, four, and then six and seven. Not all the eight is provided. Six sensors are provided first. The first ADC. Look at the second ADC. That is AD one. AD one. They provide what is the channel numbers? That is a uh, inputs zero to seven. Zero to seven means eight is possible. That means that you can you can connect multiple inputs. So total of all these will be eight. So now, if somebody asks how many sensors I can connect. Analog sensor. Sensor means I'm talking about the physical quantities which you want to measure, like a temperature, noise, air quality, and all those things, because they are analog in nature. So eight you can able to connect at a time. So totally, how many you can connect? Eight plus four. So fourteen analog inputs or fourteen sensors I can connect to the LPC two one four eight at a time. 
So they are divided, these 14 is divided among the two ADCs, six among the ADC zero and the eight among the ADC one. So I can select one from this, I can select one from this, I can start the conversion. Then after that I can finish, I can go for the next one. So there are a lot of modes of operation is there. We will learn only the basics of ADC because going to any one module in detail itself is just one subject. So that is why I've just uploaded a user manual of LPC2148 in the drive here. Those who are interested, you can always go into that and re go through little more details. So I'm just focusing on how effectively I can use in the basic mode of operation among the many modes of operation. Now, so now let's go to the details about that. How does it work and everything? <coughs> okay. So we will study the ADC first and then we will study the DAC module, how we can able to use it. So even though I'm referring to a lot of registers, it's not required to remember any of these registers in detail. So let's understand the fundamentals of the ADC first. Now, <clears throat> if somebody asks, what is an advantage of ADC? You know that ADC finds application in weight measurement, in a temperature measurement, speed measurement. So air quality measurement, like any analog in nature, you can able to, you can able to find out. In general, all the physical quantities like temperature, humidity, first what they have to do, you have to bring into the electrical domain. How do you bring into electrical domain? We use what is called sensors. Sensors convert physical quantity into electrical do domain. So once you got from the physical quantity, the physical quantities will be converted into electrical quantities using the sensors. Then you are, you are in a position to connect them to the microcontrollers. Now, so once it is there in electrical domain, we know that inside the LPS2148, whatever the doing the processing you do it, whatever the comparison tool, it should be in digital format. Since the sensors gives generally an analog format, electrical domain, that is a voltage or a current which is analog in nature, we have to that fed to the ADC and convert into what is called as digital domain. So ultimately, we are converting into analog into digital domain using the ADCs. <clears throat> so this is analog in nature that is with reference to uh, time if you measure it varies with reference to time the voltage varies it's not zero and one output of ADC is always it's always the digital now what is present inside an ADC there's a lot of hardware methods are available hardware blocks are available using that ADC can be built that itself is a research topic so the few popular which is commercially available in the market are ADCs are built using what is called dual slope conversion or called a successive approximation type so successive approximation means I'll guess what is the first bit. I'll guess what is the, uh, sorry, I'll guess the last bit. I'll guess the next bit. I'll guess the next bit. That is successively I approximate and arrive at the digital output by looking at the, this one. So the comparators will be there inside. I'll compare it. Is it greater than the half or less than the half like that? There is a successively we approximate and arrive at the digital output. So each, each of this has got its own method. So to convert analog into digital. So whenever you take a microcontroller or ADC, Please look into that. What is the technology they have used to convert analog into digital? So this will keep in mind when we take LPC2148, we will know that LPC2148 uses successive approximation type to design the ADC block inside. Now, so let's take an example and understand some fundamentals about any ADC, given ADC, what all the things you should know that. So we know that <clears throat> ADC will have an analog input. Since I'm taking LPC2148, my voltage is always what, what is the maximum possible? 0 to 3.3 volt. If you take, for example, Arduino, it may be 0 to 5 volts. So we know that in LPC2148, what is the maximum voltage I can give to the chip? That is a VDD. VDD is 3.3 .3 volts. So <clears throat> almost all the ADCs, they provide one pin called as V reference. So V reference is an important pin, both in case of a DAC and the ADC. You should understand what is a V reference in the sense, even though the chip LPC2148 is capable to work from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts, that means that maximum is 3.3 .3 volts. It is possible to design an ADC between any range. For example, I want to design an ADC for the input for zero to two volts. Yes, you can set the V reference to the two volts. So that means that V reference is another reference voltage is provided in for the ADC portion. So there is a pin is provided in the chip also. So I can set the reference voltage to whatever the value I require it. So by giving the reference voltage less than this voltage, I can have more uh, resolution in the sense even a small changes I can able to notice. For example, you have a sensor which varies from only 0 to 1 volts. There is no way it goes above 1 voltage. Then there is no meaning in taking my span from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts. I can set the V reference to 1 voltage and then I can use it. Then what will happen? 0 to 1 itself is divided into small, small, small portions. So that means that what will happen? Even a smallest value you can able to measure. So to increase the accuracy, correct, no, resolution, you can always uh, 
uh, the range can be uh, fixed based by fixing the what is called reference voltage. Now, in this discussion and the lab and the experiment, what we are doing it, I am just fixed V reference to 3.3 volts because I am not clear with what sensor I'm going to use for the project. So generally, generally most of the time by default, people choose the the VDD that is the voltage we give to the chip as a reference voltage. So unless otherwise specified, so always assume that V reference is nothing but the VDD voltage supplied given to the, the chip. So this is the one concept you have to understand. So anyway, whenever you take ADC or DAC, just find out what is the V reference is connected. But maximum of V reference is how much? 3.3. I cannot exceed 3.3 because always reference voltage should be less than the VDD voltage, that voltage given to the chip. Now, so we have understood now what is the analog input voltage. How do you fix the range of the analog input voltage? Now, what is the output? We know that output is nothing but the bits, digital bits. Now, whenever we take an ADC, we know that <coughs> ADCs are designed as what? So the bit ADC, number of bits ADC provides. So 10 bit ADC is provided in LPC2148. <coughs> that means that when you apply the zero voltage, what is the value, minimum value you're going to get? That is 000. zero, zero. When I apply the maximum voltage, 3.3 .3 voltage, this is the maximum value you're going to get. That is 3 FFF in the hexadecimal is the maximum value you're going to get. The digital equivalent of what? 3.3 .3 volt, zero, zero volt, the digital equivalent of the zero voltage. Now, so this is, I have plotted uh, with reference to time here. There's a many possibilities are there. Here only two possibilities, zero or one is a possibility is available here. So now, whenever you take an ADC, I said, based on the hardware you use there, your slope approximation, successive approximation, and your slope, ADC takes some time for the conversion to do it. That in the sense, if I apply some voltage using a sensor here, let's say sensor gives some voltage here. So immediately it will not finish, start the conversion, and give the value. The moment you put it here, you will not get here, like an LED. If you just give one LED glows. So here it's not like that. So the moment you apply the sensor, it takes certain time to convert and give the output. Because why? Some hardware logic is involved here. Depends upon what logic is being used here. It takes certain times in terms of microseconds. For example, 24 microseconds is required for one sample conversion. So that is why they have given what is called as handshaking signals for all ADCs. So what is a handshaking signal? Handshaking signal is nothing but whenever there is a speed mismatch between two events. For example, what is a speed mismatch? The moment you give the sensor input, you will not get the output. So for example, I was talking about an LCD. The moment you push the data, LCD will not take it. The data, unless what it finishes the previous data. So that means that whenever the speed mismatches, that the protocol is required, handshaking is required. So what is the handshaking is employed here, ADC, SOC and EVOC. So that means that as soon as you apply this one, that is <clears throat> you apply the start of conversion, then keep watching the end of conversion. Whenever the end of conversion, you receive the signal, that means that conversion is over, then you can read this data. So <clears throat> always, so whenever you use an external ADC, that means that ADC is not present inside the microcontroller or you require the 16-bit ADC. Many times it happens that when you do a project where you want to do medical devices, so the, the sensors provide, for example, your stethoscope and all those things provides very minute voltage changes. In such cases, I cannot measure using a 10-bit ADC. <clears throat> I have to go for a 16-bit ADC or 20-bit ADC, I have to go for it. In such cases, we provide an ADC outside the microcontroller and do it. Whenever you provide a microcontroller outside the chip, then the SOC and end of conversion is what? It's, there are the pins. There are the physical pins like an LCD, RS, enable, like that is a physical pins. So from the microcontroller, I should generate a start of conversion. Then I should wait and read the end of conversion using a GPO pins. And then using a GPO pins, I have to read it, yes or no? But since ADC is present inside the block, that is inside LPC2148 for 10-bit ADC, there is no requirement of generating a pin because it's already present inside. It's not an external event, external, it's an external entity. In such, a, such cases, how do, how do I apply the start of conversion? Nothing but the registers. So there'll be so many registers are present inside this block. So there are so many registers are present inside the block. So setting any one of the bit, for, for example, so let's say they, have, they would have identified one bit. So if I write one at this bit, so this is equivalent to what? Start of conversion. That means that since ADC is present inside the chip, so generating the start of conversion signal is nothing but what? Writing a particular value into the bit. So if I write one and a particular bit and a particular register, then what will happen? Conversion start. Then what is end of conversion? End of conversion is what? They would have been provided another register. There, there will be another bit is available. So you should keep looking at this bit. For example, always it will be zero. So whenever the conversion is complete, this bit becomes one. So this is the way the start of conversion and the end of conversion is implemented inside the LPC2148. So how do we start the conversion? Apply one on a particular bit in a particular register. 
then conversion starts then keep looking at a particular bit when it becomes a one whenever it becomes one that means that what conversion is completed once the conversion is completed then what to do read the data available here how many data 10 bits data it's very important all the registers what is provided inside the lpc 2148 at what 32 bit register see there every register whatever you study till now or 32 bit register but now what is the 10 data you get out of the lpc 2148 that is adc block only 10 bit that means that so you have only portion of the register data is stored here yes or no so then what you have to do you have to extract only that portion of the data into a variable let's say you have a variable called uh, output or va variable called var then what should i do it so i should be able to take only this data 10 bit data i am not interested in other bits what you have to do shift this data to the rightmost bit that is the bit 0 you have to shift it first to the rightmost bit then make all other bits is equal to 0 then you write that value into what a variable called val or something you can write it so this is the technique what it uses so now we have understood what is the protocol required to read an adc inside an lpc2148 what are the things i have to do it from a programmer point of view make sure that v reference is set to 3.3 volts or whatever the voltage you require in this case 3.3 voltage then apply the start of conversion by setting one bit in somewhere in the register then keep checking for the end of conversion by looking at a particular bit in a register then wherever the conversion is completed then go to here i identify the register which is meant which is meant where the result is stored then read that register data only 10 bits how do you read it align that to the rightmost bit that is a bit zero shift them shift them to the bit zero portion and then mask all the bits to zero and then you'll get only 10 bits so it will variable so once you get so this is the value what you get from analog read of arduino board so whenever you read analog read what do you get you get a value from 0 to 1023 yes or no so that function as a library you have to build for a microcontroller so that means that you are developing a driver program you're like a like a inside the your inside the os it's nothing but inside an emergency system you're going and developing what are the functions you required for yourself so this is how it has been done inside this microcontroller so now we will learn what are the registers you use for these are the what what are these three registers one for the start of conversion one for the end of conversion one for the result these registers yes or no then we will write a program and we will see that how in the code we can able to analyze the data i will impl i will interface a small an ldr and then able to demonstrate that one <clears throat> now so now we will go to the details of this block what is present here now i will looking at i will be showing a lot of registers don't get confused it's not required you to remember all the register you just understand the concept now one by one we will go now step by step we'll go now so we will before we go to that we will understand what is the resolution of this uh, resolution of the chip so what is the resolution we know that resolution of any adc is nothing but what the v reference voltage whatever you are providing to the adc block and the total number of bits to the power of 10 3.2 millivolts approximately so this is called as a resolution it's also called a step size it's also called as a resolution or step size so step size is around 3.2 millivolts or 3.23 millivolts is a resolution for lpc2148 is a general standard question what is the resolution of analog resolution of lpc2148 adc then immediately your answer should be what 3.3 millivolts one assumption you are making is what reference voltage you are assuming is a 3.3 if you reduce the reference voltage then what will happen the resolution will be reduced so that is why so whenever you want to have a more resolution reduce the reference voltage by default if i don't change it this is the my resolution now so once you know this resolution the or the step size so one common question we expect is always is what so if i give adc input if i give an adc input voltage which is vary from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts what is the equivalent digital output i supposed to get it now so for example now what is the digital voltage i can apply here i can apply the digital voltage from anything from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts i can apply let's say uh, the maximum is 3.3 .3 volts the minimum is zero let's say uh, my question is i apply one voltage now as an input then what is the digital output you got it for 3.3 .3, you know the answer so for zero you know the answer if i apply one voltage what is this one so it's always what is the formula one volt divided by the resolution that means that if you take a calculator and uh, uh, do that uh, so so for example one voltage i have to find out and then what should i do it so so i'll take uh, uh, first resolution i'll find out that is uh, let's say 3.3 .3 voltage so divided by 1024 this is my 
so resolution this is my resolution a step size now i want to find out what is a digital equivalent of one voltage then what i'll do so i said what is the formula for that is nothing but what the the digital equivalent of that what the given voltage you have to take first that is what is the given voltage one voltage divided by resolution and divided by the step size that is a formula so now i will take so, so since i have to do my formula is for what so my formula for this case is what the given voltage in this case given voltage is what one voltage divided by my resolution so this is a resolution resolution is what so we have found out that what is the resolution for that now what i'll do is so since it is divided by resolution i i'll do 1 by x so 1 by x so this is the value i got it so this i have to multiply now uh, uh, multiply into one voltage that is uh, i got the value that is the, since it's a one voltage now so resolution is nothing but 1 by x i have done it so i got this 310 310 so 310 if you want to convert that into hexadecimal also you can write it or you can write in hexadecimal as a 310 or if you want to uh, show that in a hexadecimal so then you can type 310 like sometimes in a quiz we'll give hexadecimal then you have to write it so what is the value 136 so that means that digital equivalent of uh, uh, one voltage i got it this is how you have to do in the quiz so given we will give any voltage you should able to find out what is the uh, digital equivalent of that one so what is the voltage whatever the voltage they give it that divided by resolution is your answer so in the calculator first you find out the resolution then do one by x then you multiply into voltage then you get the the value now so now i have understood what is the the resolution of that uh, chip and how to use the resolution to find out the digital equivalent of any given analog voltage now so now after understanding that one we will go into the details of the registers what are present so now this chip provides totally as i said 6 plus 8 am i audible yes sir yes sir yeah so totally there are 6 plus 8 analog uh, inputs are there i said whenever you have analog input there is no separate pins are available these analog pins are uh, duplexed or duplexed with what shared the pins with a general purpose io pins so whenever i am going to use analog pins that mean that i cannot use those pins for a gpio there is a first sacrifice you have to make it you should understand that one so two pins i am using analog means two gpios you cannot use it so i have shown in the yellow color here the 16 totally 16 and analog pins are available so their name start from what if it is analog if it is adc 0 their name will be there what adc 0.6 ad 0.7 like this if using adc 1 the names will be what adc 1.3 adc 1.4 like that will be there so you should decide when you write a program if the question is asked interface a sensor to lpc to 148 you are at liberty to choose any of the analog input either belong to the channel 0 or channel 1 you can choose any one of them but whenever <coughs> you choose any one of them in the program you should be very careful in selecting or configuring the pin as this one till now in the programs or the projects whatever you done you all use gpio pins that is why we have not you touch the pin selection registers you started with io direction then use the set and clear register maximum use io pin and you finish your programs now for the first time i am using the pins so where it is an alternate function not as a default function for example let us take a ad 0.4 let's say if i take ad 0.4 pin i am using to connect my sensor here that mean that by default it's a p0.25 but now you have to inform to this microcontroller i am not using this pin as a p0.25 i am using this pin as what ad 0.4 so how can you tell that one we have studied that whenever any pin if you are using for adc function as an or the alternate function what are the four alternates are possible this is alter first first option option 0 option 1 option 2 and option 3 there are four alternates are available for every pin you have to find out which is an alternate is for the adc for example here what is the alternate it is available for the one alternate what is the alternate here it's a it's a second alternate there is a zeroth alternate the first alternate if i start from zero so like that you have to find out so which is the alternate you are using for that for example so let us take one example to implement a project connecting ldr to the ad 0.1 let's say we use this one now so what is the first thing i have to do it i should know that it is available for the pin number p0.28 it is associated with p0.28 i have to also i identify then what is the alternate available it is a option 1 it's available here then what should i do it so we have studied that we have to use what is called what is the register called 
pin selection registers we have to use it now so since since this pin p0.28 so which pin selection register i have to use it we know that the pin selection register 0 is used for p0.0 to p0.15 the pin selection register 1 is used for what p0.1516 to 31 that mean that i to use which is the pin selection register so i have to use this pin selection register second one i have to use it so whenever i want to use the pin selection register 2 so then what should i do it so i know that it's a pin selection one register because why it's a p0.28 then we know that in the pin selection register two bits are provided for every pin to configure it now so how do we identify the pin number we know that 28 is there so 28 minus 16 so how much minus 16 means 4 12 so 12 into 12 i have to i i i said the logic so what you have to do is so you should able to minus one that is a 12 you got it so then that 12 into 2 that is 24 so the bit number 24 and 25 you have to go there then first of all you have to clear those bits then you have to set the what is the option you require what is an option required i require option number 1 i require in that one that is option that is a four alternate so there alternate one i require it so write one into that position so this concept you have to remember it so whenever we start using any block other than gpo block because you are going to use the pins which are alternate function so what is the thing i have to do in the first job in the program use the proper pin selection register write into the proper pin selection register proper value and make sure that that alternate what is you require you have to select it now so this is a, this is the I, i i have an understanding now 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 we will start understanding the the pin numbers what are the pin numbers are provided for the adc as i as i told you already adc zero channel has got a six analog input their numbers are valid numbers are 0.0 they have not provided it so 3 4 5 5 is not available you should remember that 5 adc in the adc zero channel so zero and five is not available only six is available what are the numbers 1 2 3 4 and then the six and seven you have to remember so totally how many i have six I have in the adc one channel eight analog inputs are there they are numbered continuously what is the number ad 1.0 to ad 1.7 so since all these pins are nothing but what there are the alternates available for the gpo pins the corresponding gpo pins are available here yes or no corresponding gpo pins so if i say that interface using the ad 0.4 your first question should ask me what so ad 0.4 is associated with which gpo pin you should know that unless you know the gpo pin you cannot use the ad adc pin because why the gpo pin whichever you associate with the analog pin that pin you have to configure using the pin selection register to use as what analog input pin that is why you should know which port pin it has been associated so now so we have understood that so the six pins are associated with the gpos these eight analog inputs are associated with the G these gpo pins so now we have got one more idea about before starting the programming what are the requirements this is i have listed here so what are the gpo pins and what are the uh, unlock pins mapping unlock pins now now we will start about the learning what is called as the registers which are required the first we will go to the, i said so whenever <coughs> we programming so we require <coughs> we require few registers are required because writing into the registers is very important we are we are studying about three important registers associated with the adc so what is the first register it's called as ad control register adc control register any block you take it you take from uart you take uh, pwm you take uh, timer always there is one register called control register will be there the main register will be there for a block what is the purpose of a control register in any block as the name says this is the register which used you can configure the different aspects of that block in the sense so every block is a programmable block in the nature when i say every block is a programmable what does it mean that that mean the different features of the block can be configured by writing the proper values into the registers so control register is such register by writing the suitable bits suitable values into this register i can make the adc work in a different ways so what are the important things in a control register i should able to remember now there are four things are there which i should able to remember whenever i want to start using the adc of lpc 2148 this is common for any adc of any microcontroller the concept will be similar it will not going to change even if you look at a atmel chip what is used in arduino inside also they will also provide this type of configurations now let's understand what are the things which are required for adc i said adc is cannot work at the speed of your peak clock we know that all the blocks the peripherals are been running under frequency called as peak clock which is a 15 megahertz by default 
Now, many of the small blocks present inside the microcontroller cannot work at even 15 megahertz. Then what should I do? It? The input frequency, what you given to the ADC, I should be able to reduce it. How do you reduce it? This and some divider provided. There is a provided certain bits. How many bits are provided? 8 to 15 is the bits they provided. That means that 8 bits are provided here. That is an 8-bit number. By writing the proper number into these bits, I can divide the peak clock into the required clock. Now, how do I divide? For example, if I write here, they say that peak clock is divided by this value plus 1. So in the sense, so if I write 0 here, so that means that peak clock is divided by what? 0 plus 1. That means that it is not going to change anything. So by default, if I don't write anything, what is the frequency of operation of the your ADC? It is nothing but 15 megahertz. Let's say if I write here the 1, I'll write a value 1 here into this position. If I write 1 here, then what will happen? So this value, that means whatever I write, plus 1, it becomes a 2. That means that what is the frequency of operation ADC? 15 megahertz divided by 2, 7.5 megahertz. That means that by writing a proper value into this one, I can make the ADC work at a lower speed because they, it's been very, very clearly specified. You cannot run the ADC more than less than more than 4.5 megahertz. Maximum is 4.5 megahertz. It's always better if your if your if sensor generates speeds at very high speeds, then you have to go for higher frequency. But see, within a second or within a fraction of a second, if I'm able to capture my data, it's good enough. It is better to operate at a lesser frequency. So that then the performance, noise, and everything will be less. See, wherever possible, always better to work at a lower speed, wherever it's permitted. See, I'm not doing a computation. I'm doing some measurement. So my speed can be lesser here because even if you think about, say, 10 mega, say, 1 mega, it is good enough because in one second, I can have a thousands of samples. So, so generally what I have taken in my program, whenever I've done the projects, I've taken a 6 value for here. 6 I've taken here. So 6 in the sense, if I write 6 here, 6 plus 1, 7. So 15 megahertz divided by 7. So 2.5 megahertz, I can operate it. So write this, you have to write first component of a control register. Now, we'll go to the second component. Now, so whenever you are using the chips like LPC148, so many blocks are present. And the, let's say that the embedded system, what you design is working by the battery. So when you work with a battery, it is the programmer's responsibility to make sure that battery consumption should be very less. Otherwise, what will happen? Every, every one month, you have to replace the battery. So many times, what the programmer will do is, he will check the blocks which are not used in the program at the moment. He will disable. He will disable. We, we call that mode as what is called as the power down mode. So power down means that means the power supply to that block is removed. Whenever the power supply to the block is removed, then what will happen? Power consumption effectively reduces. So, for example, I want to measure the sensor only once in a day. Maybe in the, the whole pro program is running in my embedded system. In the morning, I'll capture the temperature and upload to the cloud. I'm not using the ADC for the whole of the day. Then what should I do? It? I can supply, I can remove the power to the block and I can able to give the power only when it is required. So that is why they provided one bit called as, what is called as the power down bit, that is bit 21. So you can look at here, the bit 21, it's called as a power down bit. So these are, these are, these are generally provided in most of the blocks. So whenever I write one into this block, then only what will happen? It starts working, ADC works. Many times what will happen? Our program is correct, but you are not enabled this bit. It will not work. So whenever you want to use an ADC, make the PDN bit. That is a power down bit is what? One bit. The moment you make it one, it start working it. So this bit, you have to make it. It's a very important bit. So we have learned the, the second component, which is important in a control register. One is a, uh, the frequency of operation of the ADC. Second is what? The power to be given to the module or not module. At the time of working, you have to give the power. Make it one. Next. So we know that I said every ADC, that is a two ADCs, whatever you have, ADC 0 and ADC 1, has got a multiple inputs are there. ADC 0, how many inputs you have? Six inputs you have. ADC 1, how many inputs you have? You have eight inputs are there. But I said in the beginning, ADC can able to measure or uh, measure convert analog into digital of only one input. Even though you have a six, you have a eight, but it can measure what? Only one at a time. So which one you have to do it? Which one you want to select? You should able to specify here. See, specify here. So these are the bits. How many bits are provided? Eight bits are provided. Zero, one. See, the, each bit is different. Zero, one, two. Like this, there are eight bits there. So eight bits corresponding to what? eight inputs of an ADC. Of course, in ADC 0, you are not using one, two bits. Otherwise, these eight bits are common for both the types. <clears throat> Whenever I talk about ADC control register, think that this control register is different. These, whatever I'm talking now, describing now, it is a set of registers are different for each of the ADC. For example, ADC 0 will have AD0 control register. 
yes or no? The same register will be there for the zero block and also one block. So the register what we are talking about, the set of registers are different for the ADC zero and the ADC one. But the method of working will be similar. You should decide which ADC you are using. Those registers you should use in the program. Now, so eight bits are there here from zero to seven. Each bit controls whether you can each bit you can make it is what either zero you can make it or you can make it one. But make sure that only one among the eight, one among these eight bits, you have to make it one. Because why? So you are among the eight. At that time, you can measure what? Only one. So make one bit on whichever you are interested. That bit. For example, I am interested in the AD uh, 0 0.1. Then what should I do? I don't do anything at the zero bit. Go to the second bit. I make it one here. So the moment I write one here, then what, what does it mean that? So since you return this one information, so the ADC knows that. Oh, only AD, so one is the input I have to measure it. So you have to write one among these eight bits as one into that, indicating which is the number you require. For example, I'm interested to, I'm interested to, let's say in the ADC channel 1.7, my sensor is connected to AD 1.7. Then what should I do it here? So in this register, you have to go to the last bit, that is seventh bit, and you have to make it one year. All the other bits, you have to make it zero. So like this, you have to select one bit among the eight bit, depends upon the what channel you're using or what input of the ADC you're using for measuring at that moment of time. Of course, I'm not telling that you should not measure that one. First measure that one, then in the program, go to the next bit, change the bit, then you measure the same thing. One after the other, you can always measure. But at that time, you can able to measure only one. So this is called as, so selecting the input. So now we have studied, how do you reduce the frequency? That is, how do you decide the frequency of operation? Then how do you in, uh, disable the or enable the, the ADC block? Then the, how do you select the which input you are measuring at this moment of time? Then, so then we are using the last one, one more option. We are going to use it. So other options, even though it's available, so we are not, it's not required to for the basic mode of operation. One more is an essential. I said the start and the end, the start of conversion, the end of conversion is not the pins. It's nothing but a bit. So the start of conversion bit is start bit. So start of conversion the option is specified in the bit numbers 24 25 26 there's other operation there are other meanings are confined here since we are interested in only start of conversion so anything you write 001 into this bit is nothing but what start of conversion so whenever you want to start the conversion what do i do i will write 001 into the bits 24 to 26 then immediately what will happen adc starts converting the analog data present on the selected input at the frequency, whatever you supply, enabling the ADC block. This is how the control register is going to the work one. So the four important, the parts of the control register, which is important for the programming point of view, I've explained that one. So there are certain options are there. Reserve, reserve means don't make it one. There are certain other options are there. They are, they, they are useful to work in other modes of operation. For basic things, for basic operations, it's not required. Many times, if you look at a lot of register, a lot of options are there. You should not go into the details of all the bits and understand and memorize not required. Only when it's required, if the, the particular mode of operation is not suitable, then only you have to go to the manual, open that, see that what are the other modes of operation is required. For a basic mode of operation, it is only required to know what bits are there in a register, what is useful for you to program it. So <clears throat> now my control register is over. That is how I do apply the start of conversion, how do you enable and everything is ready. After I give the start of conversion, I said it takes some time for the conversion to complete. Then once its conversion is complete, I said you have to read the end of conversion bit. So which register is available? That register is called as an ADC global data register. So ADC as the name says global data register. This global data register is applicable to read the data from any of the analog inputs. So analog inputs, either six inputs or the eight inputs. You can read from any inputs. There are other data registers available which is meant for one, one, one input. See, for example, you have a six inputs are there. You have a eight inputs are there. There are separate 14 data registers are there. You can just capture automatically and put into those data registers. That mode is also there. So it's called burst mode. It will read one by one and put into the, those data registers. Whenever you want, you can go and read it. In normal mode of operation, so there's one common data register is available called as a global data register. Through that, I can able to connect the sensor to any of the 14 inputs, I can read it. So if you want, the common data register, which you can use to read the digital equivalent of the analog input, which is connected to any of the 14 inputs, I can use ADC global data register. Here, two aspects are important for me. So what are the two things which are important for me here now? I said, how do I know that when the conversion is completed or not? As the name indicates, done. Done means what? Conversion is completed. 
so whenever you this bit becomes one that mean that whenever this bit becomes one that mean that what conversion is completed so what do i do i apply the start of conversion by writing the 001 into the register i immediately go to the while loop i keep waiting here when it becomes one so whenever i'm checking only this bit what do i do it i have to mask all the bits here yes or no i have to mask all these bits into zero and check only for this bit whenever this bit becomes zero or one it depends upon the what what is a negative mode or the positive weight they have used it let's see that here now done bit so this bit is set to one when the conversion completes that mean that whenever it becomes one then conversion is complete then what do you do it whenever it is zero you should not you should not go to the next logic that mean that <coughs> what is the logic you would apply in the c language check for this bit if the bit is zero be there in the loop while loop there only indefinitely because why you should not go to the next step because only when this bit is one you should go to the next step so that's what you have to do it here now so now i know that how do uh, check whether conversion is complete let's say now conversion is completed this bit has become one then what is the third thing you have to do in the program then once the conversion complete capture the data 10 bit digital data correspond to your analog input where is the 10 bit digital data stored it is stored in the global data register only where is it in my result my result is here how many bits 10 bits i said 6 to 15 but this 6 to 15 whatever the 10 bits is there put into some variable called any variable you have to put into this variable now how do you put into variable as a set so what you have to do is shift this data 6 bits because it's starting from a 6 bit shift this data 6 bits so that what will happen this data results come to what the right align align to the zero bits then what you do all the remaining bits you make it zero so then then you push the data into variable that's how i can get the collect the data from this one so now i finish the global data register so these are the two registers which are used in the programming one is called adc control register other is called as adc global data register these registers separately available for adc 0 and adc 1 now we will start doing the program taking a simple project we will take it now <coughs> this is the what is present inside the adc block there are so many other options are there so you can just basics you can understand so different inputs are there there's a multiplexer is there so one input will be selected then the digit the value will of this will find out and this result is stored in a global data register in there are some other modes are there where you can keep the answer for all these channels into separate registers also <coughs> so this how this lcd adc blocks now so i have summarized the uh, uh, program steps what we have to do it we will go to the program and understand that how do we do it now this is the question we are going to do now what is i am going to do now interface an ldr <coughs> to lpc 2148 and read the analog value that is a digital equivalent of the analog value that is read the light intensity make the led on whenever there is a less or no light this simple uh, question i have taken it now what i have to do is i have to interface on ldr to lpc 2148 so whenever we want to interface an ldr to the uh, <coughs> lpc 21 one assumption you have to make it which adc you are going to use either you are going to use adc 0 or you are going to use adc 1 So now in this example, I've used ADC zero. That is ADC zero. I've used it. Now what is the input for that? E zero point two eight is the input for that. Now, so we know that. So the first thing I have to do in the program now is what? So I should able to, I should able to select the pin. So this is I've done for the question also asked. The question also asked connect an LED to indicate whether uh, light is less or not. So where is the LED? I assume P zero point two one for the LED. So since I assume P zero point two for the LED. i just made uh, the uh, the p0.21 as what output that's what i wrote in the first year now the second one what should i supposed to do it here now so now the pin selection one so this is the one which is important because why you are using p0.28 so p0.28 means it's a pin selection one register 28 minus 16 12 12 into 2 that is 24 exactly at the 24th bit is the first alternate option i given here what is an option here the first alternate that is 0 1 So zero one means writing one. So that's why I written one left shift twenty four. I got how do I got it? Twenty eight minus sixteen because it's a pin selection one. It's a twelve. Two bits are required for every uh, GPO pin. So twelve into two that is twenty four. Exactly at the twenty four and twenty fifth bit, I to write this combination. Since I suppose to write only zero one, so writing one is default is sufficient because already the bit will be zero other by default. So I written here. So or whatever we discussed in the lecture in the lecture 2 or lecture 3 how to set the pin selection one that method also you can follow so i made this one now <clears throat> now my logic starts here the first step i am doing what i said the control register is used to do four jobs what are the four jobs it is used to set the what is called as 
by divide by how much now this is what i'm dividing it so if you look at this register i'm just showing that and keeping that here and then show you that so what is that i'm doing clock divider so clock divider where is this number starts number start from bit 8 so i have to i have to position i have to write what is the number i'm going to use to divide the peak clock now so i want to divide by 4 so instead of that for example i want to by 6 you can write the 6 also here so that means that 6 so what is i written 06 so that mean that so 06 is return exactly into what position position here position here that is why i shifted to the eight times so i have done this one that is first job is done i have now now i'll go to the second job here so what is the second job here i said the 24th bit is the bit available to enable adc or disable the adc now look at here so this is the 24th bit so 24th bit i supposed to write what i supposed to write 001 so it is not the one bit actually i supposed to write 001 since i have assumed that already uh, if i if i don't set any other bit it will be zero value only so that is why 24th bit if i write one it is nothing but writing 001 at 24 25 26 so i have written the second job here so second job is what is that this is done for start of conversion so this is for dividing the peak clock this is for start of conversion next this is 21 so what is this 21 we know that 21 is power down enable that means that so this is a bit 21 i have to make it one whenever adc is supposed to work it's not in the power down mode so i will just enable that one that is power down is not next i have to select which is the channel i supposed to use it now how many channels we have it so we know that so it has got now eight channels are available i have to select one so which is the one i have used i used one i have used one means so one means i have to write in the second position here so so what i have done here whichever the channel you require yes or no write in that bit one so what i have done since i requiring i am using the input one so i'll say one left shift one if for example if i using the two second input then what should i write here so i should write three two if i say i am using the fourth input of an adc then what should i write say four so that mean that you are shifting one into the first eight bits of the control register so this is selecting a uh, input among the many inputs of an adc since i am using the first input i am shifting the one to the one to the left by one if i want the two i just replace that this one by two so this is the only change you supposed to write the program in the exam because all other things will be common this is standard there is no change here because these are the de default values only thing which is going to change is what which input we have asked to connect the sensor may be different so this only thing you have to change it now so am i audible yes sir yeah it's running here okay so now i have written the control register now my job is done i have configured the this one next what should i do it now i will read whether the completion is done or not look at this logic here so what is i have done here i set <clears throat> in the global data register i am looking at last bit only whenever the last bit is zero i should remain the while loop so what i have done here so i am interested in the last bit that is why i generated this one one u left it by 31 means what so i am preparing a mask so when i and this uh, mask with this adc ad 0 gdr only the last bit will remain other bits will be zero so if this value is equal to zero that mean that that bit is still zero so i'll put what indefinite loop it is like a writing here it will be in the indefinite loop so now i'll be in the indefinite loop here because why it is waiting for the conversion to complete now once the conversion is complete what is the last job read get the data from the global data register how do you get it we know that so you have to shift this data because it is not available here it is available in some other bit position and it's not complete 32 bits only 10 bits so bring the 10 bits into what right position how much you should shift it shift it by 6 and mask other bits with the zeros so now that i have done here first i shifted by 6 then whole of this value whatever i got it is yes no i am interested in only 10 bits remaining bits have to be zero so this is 3 ff 3 ff means what so all why if i write 111111 times 5 so 6 7 8 9 10 so remaining all bits if you make it what so 000000 if i like it is or no so then this will be the 3 ff see look at that so the first f so then second f and this is the one one is a 3 so that mean that this is the last 10 bits of all if you make it one one it's a 3 ff that is value when you make it and what will happen the remaining bits of a gdr all become zero so then i got the value 
so this is my digital equivalent of analog value which you connected to the required channel in this in this case channel 1 sorry channel the input 1 of channel 0 so i got the value of i now what does i contains any value between 0 to 1023 because that does a digital equivalent you can use this in a program like whatever you done in arduino now if i is greater than 0 led off else led on so this i indicates what is the light intensity you get from ldr same ldr circuit whatever you use there in arduino you can just connect to here so this how i can able to uh, write the program and able to use this one. i'll just demonstrate this program <clears throat> is it too much noisy hello no sir okay so now i'll compile this program i'll see that how logic analyzer and adc blocks are used inside you the the program so now i compile this program i just given a delay before repeating the program because it runs at 4 megahertz or maybe around 2.5 or so fast so i'm just giving delay of 10 milliseconds always give some delay so that it is able to uh, measure at this speed what is required it will be very fast because you will be running at so adc will pay run at 2.5 megahertz within one second you get 50000 uh, 20 to 50000 samples you'll get it because it runs so fast just assume that 2.5 megahertz around 10 clocks or 11 clocks is required for one sample conversion the clock is what 2.5 megahertz so minimum 20 to 30000 samples you can capture in one second adc that is why i just to me reduce that i just given delay of some 10 millisecond i given it so now i'll run this program in the here so i have enabled uh, all the logics what is required here to observe it number 1 so i just given here i have just given here pin connect block to show that the proper alternate adc is selected or not so we know that it is nothing but p0.25 don't p0. Point <clears throat> whatever used so p0.28 so i should observe i should check that p0.28 is changed or not by default it's already there because some of the startup code they would have written in the startup.s so it ran it ran many things many times it said because them some codes are written in the startup.s now anyway explicitly i am making the p0.28 what are the options available you know that p0.8 look at here what are the options gpo 80.1 capture match i require 01 option that is why i want to select it it's already there anyway i just select it so i'll run that point till that point so pin selection one i finished it now look at that it is a ad converter so make sure that this is the done in the program so once it is done so i am not interested in this block i'll remove this block now now i am interested only in two things now i want to uh, run this program continuously step by step or continuously run modify the analog input how do i mod modify the analog port input i can drag the peripheral so drag the adc peripheral i am using adc converter 0 adc 0 i am using <clears throat> so i am using here now look at here now so what is i have done i have to what is called configure these all values now it is something else is there here now i'll configure that one so so i'll configure that now see that everything has changed here now what are the things it has changed here now clock is a p clock is divided by what 6 the selection is what 0 2 because why the second bit you made it 1 that mean that i am using the input 1 i am not using the input 0 input that why the second bit of the register is become 1 so if you want to use the first input you have to write it 1 there in the first bit so pdn that is enabled the block power down is not in the power down mode it is enabled so that mean that all the values whatever there it is been done here now now so what is i have to observe now global data register i have to observe now what is the value in the global data register global data register contains following components it gives the result it also gives a done bit is available here now what i'll do is i will see that where is my i can apply the inputs you can see the analog inputs so this is place where the programmer can feed the value for example i can write here what is the value i can write it how much is the value i can write here from 0 to 3.3 volt v reference i can able to write it here now i'll run in a single shot the whole program and see that whether if i change this value the the data the result will change or not in the sense the data what is available will change or not like that i'll do it so now <clears throat> now to observe that what i will do is i will run the program at a shot i'm running the program i made certain entries in the uh, logic analyzer what are things i have to measure i have to measure the global data register the 10 bits in that so i have set up for that so look at here i am interested in the global data register how many bits the 10 bits see that ad0 gdr and 0800 ffcr ffc means only the bits which i am interested i make it 111 the 10 bits all the remaining bits i am making it zero i added it after ending it i shifted it what right side six times 
so then what is the value you are going to get so that i am plotting on the logic analyzer so whenever you plot the analog value till now we were taking only the bit now we can take what analog so that mean that it will show you the value you should able to fix the minimum and the maximum i fix the minimum as 0 i fix the maximum as 3 ff you have to change this one you can display this value either in a hexadecimal display or in a digital i mean uh, decimal so you can able to shift it if i don't click it it's a decimal value it gives it now i say okay other one i showed it is a p0.21 there is an led which i have used which making led on and off based on the less light or the more light so that's all i given it i just compared the value called 100 so now i close it now look at that so this is a zero value is available here it's running continuously <coughs> so so it's running continuously now it's all zero only so now what i'll do is i'll change the values so now it's uh, going slowly i can reduce the 10 milliseconds little more so that it will be faster only so i will change the value now here now since i am given what is the voltage i given zero voltage that is why you got the value is what zero voltage now see from 0 to 1023 it can vary now i'll change it let's say i'll make it what 0.2 voltage i'll make it so i'll change the tab see now that it is changed you can see that now it becomes a so it is the digital equivalent of what the point volt what is the digital equivalent 3e is a digital equivalent so if you want to see that what is exactly this value digital value of that there is in the setup you can go to the setup you so analog you select what is called a state state and say close you can see the value so how much you are going to get there what is the value you are going to get it if i just apply again uh, some other value so let's say 0.25 so you can see that 77 so corresponding to 0.25 what is the value i got it 77 is the digital equivalent which has been available on the global data register so the hexadecimal value of that what is what 4d i can able to measure like that again i'll go back to the setup i will select uh, analog only i'll say close it so now you can see the waveform for example i'll go to the max it is 3.3 so whenever it is increased to more correct now i given if condition there in the program you can see the if condition i given here so what is that if i is greater than 0 led is off so i given that is why you can see that led is become off now now i want to bring it back to the less voltage something like 2.8 voltage i'll make it 2.8 voltage i'll say that see that immediately it is reduced to 0.8 so what is the value hexadecimal value correspond to that you can see that 364 3 ff is a maximum 364 you got So LT changes from 1.5 voltage, 1.5. You can see that. So it has changed to 1.5. Like this, I can modify the analog input for any of the channels. Since I have selected ADC zero, how many channels are there? Only six are there. If you select ADC one, so you will get eight channels. So you can select any channels. Apply the voltage. You can simulate the program. It is nothing but connecting a sensor and modifying the sensor value. It's nothing but varying the light intensity or doing it and observing how does it work. so this how you can conduct a program you can write the program and you can able to use the adc block to measure the different things are there available here am i clear is it audible audible yes sir yeah okay so this completes today's session on the adc so you can go through the notes because there is a lot of questions and the quiz also we ask on the adc so fundamentals you understand don't try to mug the different registers and everything we'll never ask that one so we will give the information which bit and everything is yes it now even though in the notes has given it's only for your understanding it's not required to mug anything so for example bit position we will tell which is the bit position which is the pin number gpo correspond to that one so only the concept you should able to understand so in the notes i have given one question on how do you interface temperature sensor and ldr in that in the notes you can just go through it's a same similar concepts have been explained so i'll take tomorrow one hour uh probably the first hour if it's uh, not possible tomorrow evening i'll take it because next week i am busy with some other job so i am taking alternately don't miss tomorrow's class tomorrow i'll do the dac how do you generate different types of waveforms it's very important in the lab point of view also hmm? so i will see that uh okay hmm. so i will see that okay how many are there 35 was there okay hmm, hmm. okay so i will let you know so when is that tomorrow class so and then uh, you can attend tomorrow session another just two sessions are required before taking the quiz so one of the dac i'll explain other is a simple logic i'll explain about the uh, the relay and the opto oscillator so that come another two classes completes the unit 4 complete syllabus 
So I will send you an assignment also. Please go through that assignment. Work on it also. So, okay. I will just send the recording of this also. Those who are absent, please inform them to go through the recording. Yeah, you can quit the session. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah.